And then that drum solo. You guys, the drum solo was so freaking cool. <laughs> Everybody, welcome back another day time for another episode it is fall on my side of the planet so I've been trying to add some decor as you can see and trying to work on the studio I hope you like it I hope you can tell what this is supposed to be let me know in the comments below uh, it's a work in progress but I'm trying to make a nice space for you where you feel welcome where you can come as you are this is Rosalie reacts what do I do who am I well I'm a singer-songwriter um, I have a master's in counseling psychology and this channel is a reaction and review channel where we're all about music and psychology you'll find me doing some covers once in a while mostly reactions checking out music amazing artists from all around the world and I am mind blown at how this channel is growing guys 20k 20,000 subscribers I am humbled I thank you for subscribing to this channel shout out to Wiley Miller one of my truest ride or dies from the get-go. Kodiak, another true ride or die who is constantly cheering me on whenever I reach another subscriber milestone. And a today shout out also goes to Gabriel Bardak. Thank you so much. Uh, from what I understand, he is the general of the Nightwish nation, Nightwish army of the fans of Nightwish. And that's who I'm going to be listening to today. I want to check out another Nightwish song, Storytime. Thank you to Mr. Gabriel for being so quick. Many of you have uh, applauded how he is so quick to comment on these videos and give people resources. I'm learning. I understand now that um, um, that Flor Janssen is actually not the first singer for the Nightwish band. There were um, two other females before her, each of them having their own unique sound. And I think that's really, really cool. I know that many of you guys are huge Nightwish fans or Flor Janssen fans. And um, what I'm understanding so far, and I'm learning as I go, so let me know what you know in the comments below. This is a symphonic metal band. Um, and I appreciate your education. Uh, educational comments because I don't really ever listen to metal and when I think of metal what comes to mind is the screaming I don't understand a word that's been said but one of you very um informatively commented and educated me that even within metal there's different kinds right the kind that we know as the screaming and then there's all these different types of rock of metal while I love listening to rock and there's bands out there that go pretty hard that I enjoy listening to I've never been into metal because again most of the time the screaming was not for me but I'm learning there's so many different types of metal including symphonic metal which was not any type of just hardcore non-stop screaming at all there's a lot of symphony haha <laughs> um what's really interesting about nightwish that i'm learning from you guys is that they work with orchestras so a lot of the tracks and music that they have is supported um and music that was provided by for example the london philharmonic orchestra um the uh, london's metro voices london's young musicians children's choir which is really really cool in addition to Nightwish, Flor Janssen, and the whole band um, being so talented, it's really impressive they're working with these excellent musicians. To me, that says a lot, right? It's one thing to throw together a track. It's another thing to tap into music, music, right? Orchestra and the stringed instrument and the wind instruments and uh, all these different elements and doing so in such a professional, professional way. Um... What uh, what else do we know? So the person who mostly writes their songs is Tuomas, Tuomas Holopainen. He is the keyboard player, writing most of their songs, composes and writes their lyrics, has been doing so for the longest. Um, the guitarist is Empu Vorinen. The three singers, interestingly enough, were Taria, Taria Turunen. Uh, she had more of the operatic vocals. Then we had, um, she was with them till 2005. Second one was Annette Olson from Sweden, poppy, strong vocals. And um, thanks to Gabriel, um, I'm learning that now Flor Janssen from the Netherlands is the lady with those powerful um, operatic soprano vocals. When I listened to um, Ghost Love Score for the first time. I was blown away. Check that reaction out if you're interested. I didn't know what to expect. I had a great time with Brandon from That's Not Acting Either, who was with me on that reaction. Uh, I had had several people comment wanting me to react to Nightwish, and then he suggested it, and I'm so glad I got to experience that on that platform. What I'm uh, hearing from you guys is that a lot of their songs, a lot of their music is very versatile. It's not just always the same thing. And that being said, having loved Ghost Love Score, I'm curious to see what else we're going to find here. I think it's time for a little story.
Okay, I'm going to check out the lyrics in just a second, um, but this is already coming in strong. What I noticed about Ghost Love Score is it came in so hot that I was like, oh my gosh, what's happening? And it just built from there. This one um, had less of that um, music score, um, theater, cinematic intro in the sense of a lot of orchestral elements, and this one feels more hard to the rock. Now, I don't know much about metal, so educate me in the comments below, but um, what I do know based on your comments is that Flor Janssen at this point was very new to Nightwish. And I think what she had like 48 hours, is that true? To learn these songs and to get ready. So that is even more impressive. That eerie touch. That build up. She has the perfect voice for this. The operatic soprano is powerful. Oh, snap, yeah. Dude, the build-up is fire.
guys, this is nuts. <laughs> oh my gosh. I've got goosebumps. Listen, I don't listen to metal again, because in my mind, most of the time it was, it's just screaming and dark and, you know, even, even stereotypically speaking, a lot of times metal and heavy rock, I associate it with like darkness or satanic worship and those type of things. And even seeing the bull on the side on flames, you know, has me asking questions just because from a, a, the Hebrew standpoint, from the, um, Tanakh, the Old Testament and, um, the biblical standpoint, right? The idea of worshiping a bull was, is against, um, monotheism right against the idea that there's one god and you don't worship bulls you don't worship things and so whenever i see a bull right there is this idea of like caution and you know i don't know enough about the history i want to need to learn more about it because the bull keeps appearing in in society in different ways there's a lot of symbolism when we look at the bible right the bull and this this type of idea of idol uh, of idolatry of worship um the horns right um in christianity being associated with Satan. So there's often these stereotypes where I don't know enough about. I'm still in the process of learning to not be so quick and go, right, this is must be Satan worship, right? But to be like, okay, why the bull? What is the meaning? But I approach it with caution because of how I grew up, because of who I am as a person, and because of what I know from the Tanakh and uh, what we find in the Old Testament and the Bible, the caution of that. And bear with me, come with an open mind, right? Don't just look for bias confirmation, someone to go, oh my gosh, right? You will hear me say, oh my gosh, for a lot of this, because this is incredible and fun and awesome. But I want to have, I want to have real conversations, real talk, real reactions. So let me do that. And please feel free to do the same in a respectful way. Let me know in the comments below. What do you know when it comes to the bull in association with rock? Um, I understand it's not always just, um, how people would perceive it or how people would um box it in and then you have people you know doing this and it's so fun to see her doing that because I've done that before like certain concerts it's hard not to and afterwards I like whiplash because I probably didn't do it right I think you have to do this in a very in a, in a right way to not like ruin something in your bones in your back um but it's so much fun and um they're having such a blast the crowd's going wild they obviously love these songs they know the lyrics and so there's definitely, you know, I approach a lot of times certain types of rock with caution, depending on what they're singing about, right? I don't like things that have a bunch of foul words. There's no point to me in that. Um, I don't like stuff that's just like profane or blas blasphemous, blasphemous, is that the word? Um, or, uh, you know, just like ah, dark and just evil, right? I, ew, music is so powerful, so spiritual, is so um, much more than just la da da la la you know, like it's, woo. sometimes it means spiritual, it's emotional, it's deep on a psychological level, and it affects us, right? Differently, each of us it affects differently, but when I listen to this music, you know, there's this, this almost like contradiction, right? Because you think of metal and you think of that, right? And then you, <laughs> that was so creepy, <laughs> And then you um, see, you hear her singing and you see just, it's it's upbeat. I think Gabriel even pointed out how this one is more of that, has those uplifting vocals. And it really does. It really gives you this, it's fun, it's uplifting. Um, it's, it's, we'll talk about the lyrics in a second, but it has this just, yeah, upbeat, intense rock, wah, fun to it. I think if I understand correctly, she's a lyric, um, lyrical soprano, if I'm not mistaken, which are those, you know, that bright vibrant sound um, of sopranos and operatic so she hits those high notes and the way she does that so like opera like I don't even want to try to copy it because I'm a butcher it but it's just amazing how she's so in sync with these instruments and with the orchestra and with them with the, the music and then that drum solo you guys the drum solo is so freaking cool I gotta go back I'm gonna go back because I just um I just can't I just enjoy that so much <laughs>
that smile was precious. You guys, yo, yo, my word, this is craziness. How, what she can do with her voice is just ridiculous. It is so hard, like I'm a mess now. It is so hard to be still. It is so hard not to just, wow, this is crazy. Let's talk about the lyrics real quick. A lot of poetry, I mean, a lot of just art. That smile, by the way, um, that, that smile was so precious. Was that Empu? It really looks like they have such a good time. Um, and then uh, Tuomas, he's writing some amazing songs. Did he write um, Story Time as well? Or did he did he write most of that? "'Twas the night before when all through the world, no words, no dreams, then one day. A writer by a fire, imagined Algaia, took a journey into a child, child man's heart. A painter on the shore, imagined all the world within a snowflake on his palm. So poetic and just, ooh. Art, unframed by poetry, <laughs> what I say, a canvas of awe, planet Earth falling back into the stars. Very just, yeah, very artistic. See, this is again what I'm, what I'm talking about. When It's so easy when we think stereotype to think, oh, if it's metal, it must be singing about um, death and demons and just, rah, right? But there's such, there's a lot of cool groups out there, even with hip hop, right? There's even people who are like, listen to certain rap or hip hop and they go, oh, if it's hip hop, it must be whatever. And there's some dope artists out there like an F who rap and have sound lyrics and actually are saying something. Same thing here. This is not just, ah, right? <laughs> okay, that sounded like a dying chicken. Ah! But you see what I'm saying? Like this, this poetry to the songwriting here, this is not just empty words or condoning violence and death or anything crazy. Beautiful poetry. I'm the voice of Never Neverland, the innocence, the dreams of every man. I'm the empty crib of Peter Pan. Yo, aside, but the way that rhymed, but also the way it totally plays on that idea of Peter Pan with dreams and Neverland, the innocence of every man, right? The journey into a child man's heart. Hello, that's the whole story of like, you know, the Peter Pan thing. A silent kite against the blue, blue sky. Every chimney, every moonlight sight. I'm the story that will read you real. Every memory that you hold dear. I'm the journey, I'm the destination, I'm the home, the tale that reads you. A way to taste the night, the elusive high. Follow the madness, Alice, you know what you know once did. Follow the madness, Alice, you know once did. Oh, talk about Disney throw up back over here. Imaginarium, a dream emporium. Car caress the tales and they will dream you real. A storyteller's game. Lips that intoxicate. The core of all life is a limitless chest of tales. I'm um, the voice, and then again it repeats, I'm um, the voice of Never Never Land. The innocence, the dreams of every man. I'm um, the empty crib of Peter Pan. Talk to me about what this song means to you. What do you know about the, the, the origin behind this song? What was meant with this song? What's the point behind it? It's beautiful, poetically speaking, right? The idea of dreams, the idea of, of this other dimension where things can be upside down and inside out and where, yeah, you're where you're on this journey of storytelling, right? Um, but I feel like there's much more to this. So if you know, let me know in the comments below. I'm impressed. Right now, my first thought is just amazingly artistic, poet, poetic lyrics. Amazing band. That drum solo was fire. The way they came in hot. Definitely more of the uplifting vocals. I can see what Gabriel meant here. Um, and then vocally, just again, she, she slayed this song. What she did there... Those high notes, how she's hitting though, how she's hitting the notes with perfection on the time with the instruments and with the orchestral elements, how she sings so high with such force, very very impressive singer and beautiful, so beautiful. I love just I know you guys I refer to her as like that Viking. I know you guys were saying she's the uh, referred to often as the Valkyrie. Um, 
she seems like a very fierce um, lady, and and I, I really like that. She's from the Netherlands, I believe, correct? And then I think she's married to somebody from Sweden, is that right? They're referred to as a Finnish symphonic metal band. Thank you so much for being on this ride with me, you guys. Remember to like, share, subscribe, join Patreon, become a patron. When I reach 10 pat patrons, we're going to do a live stream over there. Lots more over here, too. So stay tuned for more. This was Rosalie Reacts. Till next time. Ayo! Hey